Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the podcast. And today we have five panelists on the line. So let's get down to it. Let's get them to introduce themselves. Panelist number one, Abby, let's start with you. Hi, I'm Abby. I'm 17 and I'm from Hertfordshire. Awesome. Fajia? Hi, I'm Fajia. I'm 15 and I am from East London. Cool. Jenny? Hi, I'm Jenny and I'm from uh, Hillingdon. And uh, Shreya? Hi, I'm Shreya. I'm 15 and I'm from Hertfordshire as well. And then we'll save the best till last. Hi, I'm Shreya. I'm 15. Sorry, Virginia. <laughs> awesome. Welcome to the podcast. Now, um, this week, Olympics have started and Team GB have a number of teen uh, athletes taking part. So what I want to do is uh, just take a moment. I'm going to read out their names. I want a round of applause from everyone. Okay. And we're going to wish them all luck. So good luck. Are we all ready? Let's start, yeah. the Let's start the clap. That's it, yeah. Good luck to Sky Brown, who's 13. Bombette Martin, who's 14. Andrea Spendolini Syriex, I think that's how you say it, uh, 16. Jennifer and Jessica Gary Rover, uh, who are both 16. Jacob Whittle, who's 16. Eden Cheng, who's 18. Emily, uh, Emily Morgan, who's 18. Matthew Richards, who's 18. Keely Johnson, who's 19. Kai White, who's 19. Scarlett Mew Jensen, who is 19. And Kate Shortman, who is 19. Good luck to you guys in the Olympics. Woo! <laughs> there we are. <laughs> I, think, I think a couple of them already won a medal, haven't they? Yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah, gymnastics twins, uh, Gaddy Rovers. Is that, is that rude saying people's surnames like that? No. I don't think so. As long as you try hard. Yeah. Well, okay. obviously the trying, it's not about the yeah. of the medals, it's, all, it's about the taking part in trying. But, you know, a medal is a nice, uh, a nice shiny bonus, isn't it? So, you know. <laughs> um, right, so um, we'll get to straight, straight to the main topic, actually. I was going to talk about the changes to the policing thing, but I can't seem to find an article that breaks it all down. So uh, that's my... Uh, bad uh, organisational skills uh, in play there, recorded now and in the public. Um, so we'll just get on with the main question, which uh, voted by yourselves uh, is, do we achieve better when there is no safety net? So, um, yeah, I, I mean, should I, should I do a little kind of like explanation as to what that means or, yeah? Yeah, that'd be good. OK, uh, so basically, um, as kind of time's gone on, obviously, uh, changes to education and things like that, especially for young people, has uh, as kind of uh, safeguarding rules and everything like that has changed quite a lot to make it a lot safer to protect you guys from harm a lot more than like when I was at school and a lot, a lot more than when my parents, you know, even more so than when my parents were at school and things like that. Right. Has that meant that people's actual level of you know what they can achieve has you know what they can do what you know has, has kind of lessened um because we kind of almost know you know we've got minimum wage now we've got you know benefit systems you know we've got these safety nets that we know even if we don't do well you know we don't really have to try too hard but they're there to catch us um does that actually help us or if we remove those safety nets would we push ourselves further Go on, Fajia, get started. Uh, no, this is actually a question. Like, when we were talking about safety nets, do you also mean kind of like the whole support kind of we have in school um, surrounding like safeguarding and stuff like that? Does yeah. that include... all, all, all of that would be part of the safety net, wouldn't it? So if something goes wrong, yeah. um, I mean, when I was at school, uh, we didn't have mentors. There was no such thing as mentors or counsellors. You know, um, it was our tutors that we used to speak to and we had 15 minutes a day as a whole form <laughs> you know? oh, wow. so, and I'm sure for my parents they didn't even have like they didn't even have that time you know um but yeah so what how, how would you do without your without your school counsellors and your mentors I, I would be doing really badly to be honest I am really grateful for that but at the same time I think it's kind of 
um, the safety nets, and I've said this before, safety nets kind of create almost a culture of dependency, um, which means that students and even adults in the future um, depend on the government, depend on the safety net, and they can't. It's kind of almost stopping them from being more independent. Um, and you can kind of see the differences when it comes to other countries that like, like young people um, grow up to be adults that are more independent and kind of also have the mentality of I have to work hard and nobody's going to provide for me because the benefit system here is so much better than um, other like help sources in other countries. So that just means that in other countries, people struggle more, but at the same time, they're more independent and they're more focused and they know like they have the whole culture of like working hard. They are responsible. But here, like you have a lot of people that um, can be a bit like can have that mentality of if something goes wrong, I'll try, but if something goes wrong, I'm going to get the help I need. I'm going to like, I'm going to get help. There's always going to be people there. Um, a lot of the time, the people that do get help, like that do um, get benefits, they're quite disadvantaged and they have the right to get benefits. But at the same time, if they were people, those same people in another country, they would be forced to work harder, you know? So I think that it may be good, the safety net may be good for a limited number of kind of really disprivileged people, but for people that are not in such a bad position, it just creates dependency. I think it should, I, I think, you know, just to kind of add to that, in those countries that don't have benefit systems, those people that don't make it essentially die. Yeah, so the benefit system, I guess, uh, you know, helps to preserve life as well which is really really important even though it's not the greatest system uh, because there's lots of problems with it but you know in those countries I, I couldn't imagine living in a country that didn't have a benefit system if I did you know if I was struggling in life would be yeah uh, who wants to come in next um so I agree with your point um I do I feel like like that the ben that I this kind of system is helpful for society as a whole but like for each individual person like for their own like personal growth it's not the greatest because it's not, because i feel like some people could take advantage of this kind of safety net like for example like people as you said people won't be so inclined to work hard because they know that they have something to like back them up but i feel like without a safety net like this is probably going to the extremes but because you find a lot of people who are struggling like this they suffer from like mental health issues and stuff like that and i feel like without safety nets like you you'll find people who are a lot more like embarrassed about their position and i guess you could like this is like really i don't know how i'd say this is more extremist for me but i'd feel like there's obviously so many like mental health problems that can arise from that and as a result it means that they they would not be able to work up to their potential but it, they wouldn't be able to control it like even because you're poor and you you have so say you're a poor and you had the option of benefits or and you didn't have the option of benefits if you did have the option of benefits you wouldn't be motivated to work hard to like get yourself up if you didn't have the op option of benefits even if you did work hard and it just didn't work out i feel like it would still end up meaning that after all of this winding chain of events that you end up not being able to work your hardest but i don't really this is probably extremist and i i don't know yeah. I, I, think, I think there's a lot of people that think like that as well in this country you know there's there's always especially when it comes to benefits um there's always debate around should we have benefits in this country or not um and and i think you know that's one of those difficult things that we need to negotiate uh for Jeff. Um, so adding on to like kind of the whole benefit system, um, like the benefit system is there to help people. And sometimes it's like you can see that some people that don't necessarily need that much help. But there's some people like that I've heard of like that kind of have different properties and own houses. They're kind of not showing to the government that they own those houses and like kind of getting help playing rents and stuff like that. There's a lot of kind of people that cheat the system, but then there's a lot of people that like 
do definitely need the benefit system. So the, def the benefit system is not something that we should get rid of, but I think it should be more controlled and people should take care. Like the government should be more responsible um, because currently I don't think they are being that responsible because there's people that are benefiting of the benefit system um, that don't need it. There are, pe there are big companies that are not paying taxes. Um, and then there are people that are really struggling and they're really depending. And like Teach said before, that are kind of surviving on the benefit system. Um, like I remember media studies, we were watching this film called I, Daniel Blake about this man um, who is old and has had um, like multiple heart attacks and he's kind of still being forced to go into a job to go into the working world um, but he's like a carpenter and he can't do his job properly and I think at, in that movie it kind of shows that like what would happen if like that person didn't get benefits and he just kind of um, a lot of the time people that are like him are being treated mistreated really badly um, and they're not being given the help that they need and I think that is all down to the government being more careful of where the money goes because people like him exist. So I kind of think that having safety nets is fundamental really and that none of us would be able to live without them even just going back to benefits we've all here have probably benefited from having benefits at some stage I mean, even if it's just through child benefits, I mean, I'm pretty sure all of our parents will have got some form of child benefit to help support us when we were younger, potentially even still now, because we're all still young here. But um, yeah, I think we do need to have these safety nets because things can happen. I mean, we've seen with COVID and the amount of people who lost their jobs and the amount of people who had horrible things happen to them, people lost their businesses, they lost, pretty much everything without those safety nets we would be in such an awful position now I mean we already are in an awful position but imagine how much worse that would be if we didn't have safety nets and we in some ways we could even consider the NHS as a form of safety net in that we don't have to pay for it but it's always well always who knows now with what's coming out in the news with the Tories but um we're gonna have it to, pr to protect us to help us when we get sick when we get injured at no cost to us aside from taxes, which is really quite minimal when you look at other countries you have to pay thousands and thousands for an ambulance ride when they're literally dying. They have to pay to be able to live effectively. So we're really fortunate that we do have those sorts of safety nets. And I think without it, we'd be pretty stuck. Even if we are in a place of privilege, we all rely on these safety nets. Yeah, that's my take. So, I mean, obviously, we, I mean, we're talking about benefits a lot. Um, you've just mentioned healthcare there. There's also education, which uh, you mentioned earlier as well. Um, I mean, is, is it, obviously there's some uh, safety nets which are, which we're saying, you know, we are best to keep. Um, and yeah, Abby, I told you, I would like just kind of just to say, you know, I benefit off the benefit system. Um, so, because my dad's disabled also when, COVID happened, um, I'm self-employed. So, um, you know, I, I got that support there. Otherwise I couldn't, you know, I, I don't even have sick pay or holiday pay, right? <laughs> so I don't, I, I always say I don't get ill, right? Because I can't afford to get ill. I don't make any money, right? <laughs> um, so yeah, um, but yeah, are, are, there, are there certain safety nets which you feel, you know, yeah, we like them and they're there and that's great, but maybe we could get rid of them. Because I'm, I'm thinking about some of these poorer countries, do you know what I mean? People, people invent some amazing things. Like there was that, you know, uh, I think it was in, oh, which African country was it? It was in like some little village. Uh, and I can't remember which, which, where it was now. I need to remember his name. He was like 15 years old or something. And he built a working, uh, a wind power station out of scraps. And he'd never read a book before. Like he can't read. Like or I don't know if he can't read or not. But he hadn't read a book. He had, he had no schematics. He just saw 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 a picture of it and he built it, right? Um, and that was in a country where you know essentially there there are none of these safety nets. Um, yeah, go on for Jeff. So I think when you're talking about safety nets, there are some essential safety nets that we kind of need and they are a privilege, but like people still need it. Like the NHS, like Abby was talking, that's kind of a necessary safety net. 
Um, but like other safety nets, um, yeah, well, it's great that we have them, but like if we, they are creating a lot of dependency, like for example, um, when it comes to like in school, like we have a lot of safety nets. We have a lot of teachers kind of um, monitoring and taking care of what we're doing and like so many people to support us with our mental health and stuff like that. But at the same time, it's kind of like, um, like an example would be for me, like there's this one teacher whose sole job is to help us kind of like revise, like literally. And it's kind of like, it's, it's almost like a safety net. like. Um, they are helping us like if we get any bad grades they'll mentor us and they'll tutor us and stuff like that whereas some other students don't get that and I think something like that would create like more dependency like because if you don't teach students like to like students and like people in general if they don't make mistakes if they don't struggle in life they're not gonna learn from it and I think it's kind of the same thing when it comes to like um, benefits as well, because like some people are struggling um, and they are being helped. But at the same time, like they can have some people can have that mentality of, oh, I'm going to be helped even if I struggle, even if I do badly, even if I lose this job um, or do something wrong, I'm always going to be helped. And that kind of can lead to people not reaching their full potential, not putting in effort, um, you know because they can constantly be thinking, oh, I don't really need to work that hard in this job. If I lose this job, it's okay, because I can go on benefits or like I can get job seekers allowance and um, stuff like that. And I think that's just where we need to draw the line. So let, let's focus on the education part then. Okay, let's focus on the education part. So, um... I mean, I've, I've spoken, I think, for G, I spoke to you about this before, about, you know, people that um, there are some experiences that I've, I've seen working in schools. Um, and also from my um, I've gone through school and then eventually went to university as a mature student. Um, and I remember like in, in there, there was uh, in a secondary school I was working in, there was someone who was sitting there at GCSE exams and they got to sit at the back of the class. They had anxiety um, and they got to sit at the back of the class near the exit and they could walk out and then they could come back and carry on with the exam. Right. Um, they got to college and they explained the situation to the college and the college are like, well, that's just tough. Right. We can't, we can't do the same. We can't give you that same treatment. Right. And then following on from that, there was an, another experience where, you know, uh, this is actually my personal experience of university um, of, and it's quite similar to a lot of the young people that are now at university that I've worked with in, you know, uh, in, in the past uh, where I didn't quite understand something. So I went up to the lecturer um, and I said, oh, can you just, you know, I don't understand this. Can you explain it? And they said, well, have you read this book? And I'll be like, yes. And they'll say, well, read it again. And that was the level of support that you get, you, you know, that I got at university. I know a lot of other people get at university. Now, if let's say for Gia's example of someone that helps you with your revision is in school, how do you gain that, you know, how, how does that help you in terms of the long term? Or is that just about, you know, school's short term goals of exams uh, success? Or I think a long term strategy. Yeah, go on. Sorry. I think, yeah, no, I feel like that, like the revision help. I think that's more of just a exam success thing because at the end of the day, that's kind of all people care about. Or like just that's that at the end of the day, that's what like people care about for like future like for prospective colleges and universities. But um, I think that that's the kind of like temporary safety net. So, but we've I feel like people have gotten so used to having a safety net that people maybe wouldn't feel like like they wouldn't imagine not having it so uh, um, so how, how, how would you how would you navigate that or any of you how would you navigate that to become independent okay so let's say let's say I mean I've, I've had I've had university graduates come and work for me right and they've been like computer you know like they, they finished a computing degree or a business degree or things like that and i've asked them to do a task and they're they're asking me how to do that task so i'm just like well you know what i this i'm hiring you because i need you to do a job which you do and i haven't got the time to support like hold your hand through that because i've got you know uh, i've got things like the podcast i've got 
15 different youth projects and only have two days a week to work on them, right? So um, I then have to say, well, I'm sorry, this isn't going to work out for us. Yeah. So how do we get to the point where we're not having that conversation? Right? Um, because there's, there's a big there's a big gap, isn't there, between going to school and then like actually when you're at, I don't know, which way, which way around is it? Going to school because, yeah, and then you're building up, aren't you? That's how, I think that's how they want you to kind of understand it, um, to kind of like being out in the big wide world. I feel like that's there's a kind of in your example, there's the difference of like having the safety net of someone being to being able to help you and there's the safety net of there's like the you have to be qualified to be able to do to do this because i feel like the safety net is just like because a safety net's job is to support you in your role so it's it's kind of supposed to be like backup but i feel like in like in the example that because the person that the people you qualify they may be qualified with to do you know if they had like the computing degree they'd be qualified probably to do it but if you were to ask them to like teach people to set up like a tent or something i feel like that and then having and then them asking you that i don't think that's a, that's the kind of safety net because that's not something that they already know how to do like for example when you're in school and you have your safety net you're like you're learning throughout you're like you i don't know how to explain this but you kind of know what you're doing as you go through and like you know the process of it but if you struggle with that process with this process that you're already familiar with then the safety net is the next point of thing like point of whatever to go to but then in the example with the tent because this this person has like no idea what to do because this person has no familiarity with it i don't think we should it should be called as a safety net so okay so um let's let's say let's say it's in your field right let's say you you go to see a doctor they're a newly qualified doctor and they're struggling to put on the stethoscope and they then get the nurse to put the stethoscope on them properly. And right. How would you feel in that situation? <laughs> because they, that actually this this is this could actually happen, couldn't it? If someone is supported all the way through and then, you know, every time they make a mistake, someone just fixes it for them. That's essentially what the safety net is, isn't it? It's someone else comes along and fixes the problem for you. Then how do you learn from that situation? How do you how do you guarantee that person is going to learn from that situation? You don't. Because I wouldn't want to go to the doctor's office and they can't put on a stethoscope. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'm like, mm. oh my god. No, I went to like hospital a while ago and they were trying to like they were trying to do my blood oxygen levels and they missed my artery 13 times and I came out and both my wrists were swollen and that highlights the importance that you need to know how to do your job if you want to do something and that's like that's kind of like there, there shouldn't be a safety net there they need somebody to show them because you should not be missing an artery 13 times between two people but that's not <laughs> easy done but I mean there needs to be like you would expect with doctors especially because there's training there's seven years I mean with your example that you gave earlier with the person who came in they should have known how to do the task because I mean they've done the CV they've done like the training they have the experience but there might be like online videos that you can do now because I know there's a lot especially with like computer and business side they do like a lot of training videos especially with like new employers and they'll be like oh yeah you don't need to know anything you don't need any experience we'll just give you this video and you'll be fine but I think it does depend on your level as well because if you're a really high level employee they'll just expect you to know it whereas if you're younger you have a bit more support and I'd like to keep the support to be fair I'd like revision support in my life So how, how would you, so Abby, how, how would you then go from, let's say from college, you've got a revision support, you go to university, let's say, uh, I assume, you know, you then go on to university, right? Mm -hmm. And um, there is no revision support there. Like there's no person that does that role. How would, yeah. you, how would you cope in that situation? What would be your strategies? I mean, I feel like what we really need is through the revision support in early years, they need to be teaching us ways to revise so that we are able to then go off and do it by ourselves. So like 
on the if they say they give you five different revision methods and then you do that with them whilst you're in college you get the grades you need and then once you go off you have that independence and you are able to just replicate it and do it then by yourself but it can be I can understand why it'd be difficult because you're suddenly going from having this person who's there who's making your advice who's doing it with you to then just being alone but then I guess you could also then rely on the people around you as a new form of safety net so you have like friends who do the similar course and you can revise together I think there are alternatives but it's just knowing how to get there and then using this new independence that's come with age to be able to find those alternatives so a point I just want to make is that I think because we always have this safe safety net from like um, going into primary school to secondary school to college to uni to into jobs, I think a lot of uh, sometimes some, well, something might happen is instead of looking for opportunities to kind of work alone and um, kind of shine by yourself, like trying to understand um like i don't know a book or like an assignment by yourself um at university i think what people might do is search for safety nets from one safety net to another safety net to another safety net to the point where like you never ha learn how to deal with that by yourself and i think this has happened to me before um when it comes to kind of like talking about issues a lot of the time i've done this in the past where it's like um there's something going on and I need to tell my counselor. Now she's not there. I need to talk to my pastor manager. She's like, he's not there. I need to talk to my head of house. They're not that like, um, they're not there. Then I'm going to talk to my best friend. If they're not there, I'm going to talk to another friend. You know, it's kind of from jumping from one safety net to another safety net to another safety net. Instead of kind of sitting down and thinking, hey, what is this issue? What, what have I got myself into? And how do I solve this? Um, and I think that that might be an issue when it, helps, when it comes to having too many safety nets, that you never actually think for yourself and kind of try and reach a solution by yourself. You're always seeking help. Yeah, no, no, no. It's, yeah, definitely. And I, th I think, you know, especially I always use university as an example, because I think that's the time when, you know, if people go to university, they've turned 18, you're now completely independent. Whatever you do at university, your parents never need to know about it. If you don't turn up to lectures, your parents won't get a letter through the door or a phone call, right? You'll just be kicked off the course. And then it's up to you to have that conversation, right? If you overspend on your bank account, the bank aren't going to contact your parents. They're going to, they're just basically going to contact you. They're going to send the bailiffs around to you, right? Um, and actually what that's, what, what, what statistically, it's really sad as a statistic that, you know, um, has been found is that the the levels of uh, suicide in first year university is massively high because people can't cope with that drop from, you know, or that, that climb from, from college to university. I'm guessing there's, there's very similar statistics. I don't know uh, for certain, but for people that go from college into work um, or then go, you know, uh, seeking work um, if they don't want to go on to university, um, and I, I know there have been like people that have, you know, uh, young people that have, you know, killed themselves, unfortunately, as a result of working, you know, one of the companies I work for or work with, uh, City Sprint, they, they have a really um, famous, uh, you know, case of it where someone, uh, a London uh, motorcyclist, he was 18, you know, finished, finished college, got a job for City Sprint delivering parcels and basically ended up getting loads of tickets didn't know how to deal with it, didn't know how to talk to his parents, uh, didn't have a school support, you know, any school counsellors or anything like that, and unfortunately ended up uh, taking his own life. Um, and, you know, so what, what I'm trying to get at is, you know, how, how do we, you know, what, what is, is it good that we have these safety nets? If not, how do we transition away from them? Or do we have to remove certain things? Um, Jenny, what, what kind of safety nets do you have at school? I do I think we've got safeguard in here, but I've never really used them because there's never been much need to. Yeah. So what 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 would happen if let's say you didn't like obviously if you, there, there's legal if you don't turn up to school then you know they have to contact your parents and things like that. Uh, but um, if you're behind on your homework or you're struggling with something, you know, might be personal, might be educational, whatever it is, you know, do you have people 
in place there? Do you know about them? Or is it a case of, I don't know about them, in which case, is there a safety net? We could hypothetically ask that question, couldn't we, if, if you don't know about your safety nets? There's teachers that I can always go to. Yeah. And or is, is there like any specific person that would then find you, you know, oh, we think Jenny's struggling, we're going to go find her? I think my form tutor would do that. But it depends how much you're struggling, because if it's in like a moderate amount that's not too far below your average level, then I don't think they'd do something because it's not enough gap. So do you think it's only educationally based for you yourself? So if educationally you were struggling, then someone would find you. Whereas if you're emotionally struggling, do you have any systems in school for that? Pardon? So if um, uh, you, you were saying from, your, from, from what you were saying, so if you're struggling educationally, if you're underperforming, then someone would come and find you and talk to you potentially. What about if it was emotion? You know, if someone noticed, you know, that your mood was off um, or do you know what I mean? Like you, you are acting differently to how you normally would. Is there anybody that would that would pick up on those on those things? Normally teachers would because they kind of get to know your their students and they grow to care about them so they notice these changes. So that's interesting because uh, I mean, different schools seem to have like lots of different systems, don't they? And um, levels of support. Uh, Sneha, what about yourself at your school? What what support uh, structures have you got? Um, so we have like for if it's for a mental health issue, so we have things like counselling or like our teachers are there. And if it's a learning disability, we have like a whole team, a department, like department to help us like help the people who need that extra support. I don't actually remember what they're called. The home. Mm, no, that's just the place. I think it's SLP. No, no, that's no. I forgot what it's called, but um, it's a whole department basically to help uh, people who like who are struggling with like learning difficulties or like mental health issues. So like, there are people there to help. And then if you don't need the help and you just want to. Uh, be independent then that's there for you as well and, and and like kind of i get open to everyone um is so when you when you when you go for these support systems and i'm just trying to work out what the line is between what support system and what's a safety net because i think the safety net is very different you know like if i was walking on a tightrope and i fell the safety net is going to stop me from splishing on the floor right um is splishing a word i don't know um so it's kind of that you know that that's my that just takes over for me yeah um in a car if you're driving too fast and you don't notice that there's another car in front some of these cars have auto braking that's a safety net isn't it it just takes over for you and runs you like runs the car for you that will stop the car um so where you know what's the line between what's support and what's a safety net um in the school analogy i feel like um it was the say the idea of a safety net is not as widely like it's not as prominent as the idea of a support system because the difference between like a support system and a safety net as you said a safety net would be like the like worst worst possible scenario it would help you build up from that like save you you know in the tight roping if you fell only then would the support the safety net catch you but then the support system is kind of helping you as you continue on. So like, for example, you'd have like that really long pole thing that you'd hold, that's more of a support system. So I feel like in school, everything you do in school is more of a support system rather than a safety net, unless worst comes to worst, you like fail your A-levels or GCSEs completely and absolutely. But even then, I feel like the school wouldn't be able to do anything. So I feel like not a lot of like organizations or people are capable of providing, of being a safety net. Um, because in the example that you were really to really like die down on it, then you there's not you don't really have many places to turn. Like if you were like struggling, you'd still have lots of places to like turn to. But if you were really like low level, there'd be like there's very limited people to turn to. Yeah. 
And do, 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 do you think that's the case with all things? So like going back to the example I gave of like in the exam, you know, if someone has um, a, a mental health issue, um, that, you know, is, is the ability to walk out and walk back in helpful or not? Given that, you know, if you're, if you're at work, right, because, you know, ultimately that's the, that's the final stage of like the whole education system, isn't it, right, <laughs> um, is to end up somewhere you're working. Um, are you realistically going to be able to just walk out? I mean, I have dyslexia as well, right? And so th this is what kind of where my question is coming from. So I have dyslexia. I never had dyslexia before. I didn't even know I was dyslexic until I was 27, right? So I went through my whole education structure um, and, and then first and second year, most of the second year of university before I realized I was dyslexic, okay? When I got my, when I went to the support service and they did the test and they found out I was dyslexic, they basically said, well, you've got enough coping strategies. You just deal with it. So there's nothing we can do. We'll give you like a free laptop, right? But, you know, that's about it. Like the, you, you deal with stuff. Do you know what I mean? You've got your own systems in place that you've learned. Um, so, you know, is it, ha, if, if I was diagnosed as dyslexic earlier in my life, would I have those independent skills to deal with those situations? Like now I'm at work, I run my own business and everything like that. Do you know what I mean? So would I be able to um, deal with that in the same way? And, a, you know, a lot of like Richard Branson and stuff, you know what I mean? They're all... Uh, in that same situation um i i wouldn't think you'd you'd have the same capability of, as you have now because i feel like to an extent the support system slash safety net idea can kind of like coddle you up like even like because say you know how you have like different levels of i don't know something but then because our because our support system's not so finalized it's ever like say if you had like i don't I'm not really informed about autism or anything, but I'm just going to use it as my example. But say, you know, say if you have like different levels of autis autism, being from like mildly autistic to like really, um, what's the word, like really badly affected by it, I, our support system tends to treat it all as the same thing. So even if you were like mildly dyslexic, you'd probably be treated as like, you'd be like, I don't know, like mid, I don't know. but as a result it means that because of i as a result it kind of means that you're more you're more wrapped in like a really thick blanket and you can't really like it's i don't know like you know the idea of like helicopter parents like you may be able to be independent for yourself but because you've got the support system in the form of your helicopter parents you can't really break out and really do anything yourself so i feel like it's the same idea because you because you weren't diagnosed with dyslexia until you were much older you had the chance to be i guess like you weren't so like huddled up with support systems while it would have while it probably may have been like beneficial for you it could have been like because i've got a friend i think i don't know completely but she has she had like a thyroid gland problem and as a result and she got better from it after a couple of years but still to this day she like her parents still coddle her with everything and as a result it means she's become a lot more like entitled to everything like she's become a lot more spoiled and she kind of uses this like the excuse of her old like like old condition to kind of boost her on I guess so I feel like it's the idea of the fact that our support system treat it's more like definite it's not really because also because everyone has like such a wide range of different like issues they need help with we can't really eff effectively help to catch someone in that safety net so it, it could either be like too less or too much which means that some people won't be able to realize their true potential anybody else want to come in on that did you so um i wanted to talk about like 
almost the same thing, but at the same time, it's kind of like, I think when it comes to safety nets and like when it comes to like mental health issues or like something like autism, I've had friends where it's kind of when it comes to some students, like well, this one student that comes to mind, um, he has autism, but like he, um, like he's always kind of, they've known from a young age and he's always like gets everything he wants. Like his parents have like literally put themselves like to the like to the point where like his mom is in debt because he wants Rolexes and like um it's kind of like almost he gets everything he wants and he always brings up his autism and he always has that safety net um and people kind of let him off the hook even when he's gotten into fights or he's put other people in danger or he's stalked somebody else and issues like that um and then I have like another friend who was also like autistic and like like two other friends and like one of them has just left year 11 and like nobody knew like literally nobody knew until the end of year 11 after he finished his GCSEs and like he absolutely smashed it he was like one of the biggest role models like he like he was I think he was the deputy head boy um and like everybody look up looked up to him and nobody knew that he has autism and I have another friend who also like kind of has has autism as well but like people always put pressure on him and like he knows there's something wrong, but like, and he has had conversations with me where it's like, I think I may have something, but like, I don't wanna, I don't want that safety net because it might mean that people kind of like um, almost look down on me or like are going to help me too much. And I'm scared that I'm gonna become more dependent. Um, I think he's maybe it's because he's heard me ram, ram, rambling about cultural dependency and all of this stuff before, but like, um, and he's doing well he's actually doing really well and it's kind of like even though he's struggling um he is pushing through and even though his mom wants to take him to a psychiatrist and like he like his parents and his family do want to get him help because there may be something there um he thinks he has autism um uh, he's still pushing through and i think that that may be beneficial unless it's like somebody that desperately needs help and like definitely should have a um safety net I think it, it, through those struggles, they learn how to become like stronger, more independent people. So do you think it's okay? And I'm, I'm, I'm playing devil's advocate here, right? Do you think it's okay to live in a society where certain people have a difficult road to success and achievement than others? Is that okay? Well, I think it was Michelle Obama that once said that like the people that struggle the most, like I'm paraphrasing her, the people that struggle the most and have faced the most challenges are the ones that are going to end up being the most successful because in the real world, people aren't going to like give everything to you in a silver plate, are they? Maybe. I mean, the, the world is still ruled by the by the one percenters, isn't it? So yeah. it's, not, it's not like it's not like that. That's, you know, if you think about the struggles of black people in America, right? Mm -hmm um or you know women in in certain parts of the world you know um it's not like they're running those countries yeah true so successes are very micro successes they're very individual success uh stories rather than you know cultural changing so is that is that okay like is it all right for uh let's say in this country we know women have a much harder struggle in society than men do right so is that okay it does it's not okay stronger so does that then balance it all out Do you know no, it's not okay it's definitely not okay but at the same time it's what makes people stronger like it's what makes i believe the struggles it what makes his thing it's harder for women to get at the top but the women that do make it they smash it like they're better leaders than men then I 100% believe that. Like, like the president of Australia, please, like she got there, she faced so many struggles, but she's probably one of the best world leaders that we have currently. And I think it's the same, it's same goes for all the people that struggle. With When it comes to elite people that have always been kind of given special treatment and being privileged like Donald Trump, they end up messing it up. But people that face struggles, like, I don't know, Barack Obama in comparison. Yes, we're comparing Donald Trump and Barack Obama because he's 100% more superior. Um, he faced struggles. 
like they went like people that face struggles and that come from not so much of a privileged background they end up doing better in life at the end even though it's harder for them to get there even though we have we've had more donald trumps than barack obamas the the one barack obama we had and the few good people that we've had they've left an impact and they've done so much better than the people that have always had kind of that safety net and support that they didn't really need and I guess what I'm asking is, is that okay? Like, I know you've okay said- Okay to an extent, okay to an extent. No, but then you're putting kind of reasons why it is okay in place. Yeah, right? uh, okay I mean, to an extent, <laughs> to an extent. I, mean. um, I actually really disagree with that. I think that while struggles exist and they're always going to exist, we need to actively minimize people's struggles because nobody should have to struggle for basic things that other people have. I mean, from this, you could go to the extremes of people being in desperate poverty, people not having access to food, water, whatever. You could go as far back as those struggles, but even simple struggles like discrimination, discrimination, prejudice that people face, those struggles shouldn't exist. And we shouldn't kind of almost romanticize people having to go through these struggles to get to places because it's just gonna reinforce this system in this world that we live in where people have to fight for anything they want and have to fight for equal opportunities i mean struggles are always going to exist because life is unfair sometimes and bad things do happen but we can put in place safety nets to then make it so that when these bad things do happen and people are in these bad situations they still have every opportunity available to them that everybody else does and so everybody has the same chance to get to a good position I mean even going back to before how you were talking about um people who'd come from places of from disadvantaged backgrounds but they'd work their way up the amount of people who've been able to do that is so small and it's so few people in comparison to the amount of people that are actually in those situations and people who come from place of privilege will always well, not always, but pretty much all the time, stay in that place of privilege. They're always gonna have more than what other people have. So I think we really need to, we need to kind of get rid of the stigma that comes with safety nets and support. And we need to actively work to make it available to everybody and to just make the world a better place, one bit at a time. Yeah, I agree with the question because I think that for some people uh they should like depending on how bad the situation is i think they should be like they could be should be depending on if they want it or not to be uh called as like normal person as in you shouldn't like uh dwell on their like their disabilities so like because i have personally i have craniofacial dysplasia which is like a rare genetic condition so I've had like the support my entire life, but I have also by like grown up with the uh, knowledge that I'm like everybody else. So I've been treated the same way as any other person would, and I think that actually helped because it. I guess it gave me the confidence to believe that I can be like everyone else. And just because I have this condition, it doesn't like define me, and it doesn't make me like a different person. Like I need extra help. But if I did need that help, then it's still there. Like, it's still available. Okay, so um, safety nets are a good thing. But at the same time, if we're talking realistically, when it comes to struggles, um, people are always going to struggle. And when it comes to discrimination, um, unfortunately, we don't live in a utopian society and there will always be some sort of discrimination. So um, the whole concept of struggling in order to get somewhere, it's around to stay. Although there, like, it's kind of the amount of people that have struggled in their lives and come from disprivileged backgrounds um, that have been successful compared to the people that have been privileged is like just really disproportionate. Um, when you think about it, if people um, don't like, if, if for example, if Barack Obama, I'm pretty sure at some point in his life has faced racism. Now, if Barack Obama didn't face racism, then when he got to the top, he wouldn't have even tried to get rid of systemic racism. 
So it's those experiences that people have to go through in order to become aware of them. Because if you live in a bubble of always being treated fairly and always being treated perfectly fine, um, unfortunately, you're gonna grow up to not being aware of these, is is these issues. Like when it comes to girls, um, a lot of the time, like back when I was younger, like I'm pretty like we had safety nets and like in school, like in primary school, especially they made it really fair between boys and girls. Um, but then in like, I think when we reached secondary school, I think that kind of constant push of girls, boys, same opportunities, everything, everything, it wasn't there. And I kind of started noticing that girls when they become captains of like sports teams or when they're captains or their leaders um or like have any sort of position that means that they get to take charge of other people um they're kind of looked down upon and they're not listened to when you kind of become aware of that and go through the experience you grow from it and that just helps that person to in the future tackle that issue and um, currently in the future, if right now we don't, we kind of don't have those safety nets and people struggle when it comes to discrimination, um, although it may be really bad, if they can overcome that, they can help make society better. So we can at some point reach a world where discrimination isn't such a big issue because we've, ha we've gone through it. Like if we don't go through something, we're never gonna solve it. But then the thing is, like you hear, like you guys hear so much about how power, like corruption, and how power can get to your head. Like, but at the end of the day, even with all of these like fair opportunities or no fair opportunities, like you could, you could easily, with without doubt, find at least one person who who worked their way up from poverty to be to be like at the top. But then they'll. Like most of the time, they'll be able to empathize with like other people who are also trying to work their way up. But there's there's also like a really strong chance that they become so corrupt with all this power that they have because like working your way up from the bottom, you'll be a you'll like you'll have imagined you'll have like a warped kind of imagination of what it's like to be at the top. Whereas if you're like already like at a stable situation, you'll have like you'll have like a, a more realistic idea of it. Like for example, if you were to work your way up from being the president, from being from middle class and from being from lower class, even though the lower class will have to like, the lower class person would have to like struggle more and go through more like trials and tribulations. You'll find that like, I feel like in my opinion, the power would probably go more to their head, but because of the, the nature that they've worked, that they've worked at, they'll be able to, they'll more like, loved i guess like for example with barack obama and donald trump it's kind of obvious that barack obama had to work like harder to reach the top but i feel like he had a more uh romanticized idea ideology of being president like because donald trump already had has somewhat like this i this is probably going to be so controversial and i'm going to regret saying this probably in the future but like i feel like donald trump had a had like a better idea of what it was what it's like to be in charge of something because like previous to that he was all, he was already quite big in society so even though he didn't have to work as hard he was able to understand the reality of the situation unlike someone else I, maybe Barack Obama is not the best example but like if like if you were to find anyone else who would like work their way up to the top they'd they wouldn't have like they wouldn't have a great understanding of the position they're working for. I don't know. This is probably really controversial, but no, um, no, can no. I just please say something, please, Teach, please? Oh, okay. I'll, I'll, give you, I'll give you five seconds, five seconds. Okay, so when it comes to Donald Trump, I think people like him who are already at the top and they get a responsibility, such as being the president of the United States, if they already kind of have always been privileged, they don't understand how big this is. It's like, it's like somebody like, for example, from like, Barack Obama being born in like Jamaica and stuff like that and like working his way up he's just like okay being a president is a big deal I have to take care of every single person including the poorest people from like the neighbor like the poorest and more disprivileged neighborhoods but when it comes to somebody that's already been in power they're not gonna have those people in mind they're always been at the top of society and they're just moved on to another position where the top of society yeah 
And uh, right, so I'm just looking at the time. <laughs> um, okay, so we've had lots of pros and cons. We're gonna we're gonna wrap it up uh, with some final thoughts. Uh, one last thing uh, to kind of add in there, and I, I guess this is a pro to having safety nets, is that um, scientifically speaking, studies have shown that uh, countries' better healthcare and better education systems have people that live longer, have be uh, better lives, smaller families, and are more environmentally friendly and you know like eco right um so obviously having like the nhs for us has been a good thing and having you know uh, compulsory education has been a good thing for us compared to other countries that don't have those things so those we, obviously there's loads of pros and cons right uh, and it's nothing to do with trump and versus obama or anything like that so take that bit do you know what i mean like um obviously there are good examples but you know let's take that out um Final thoughts on the question, which is, uh, which is, which is, oh gosh, I've lost the question. Uh, do we achieve better when there's no safety net? Abby? No, we do not achieve better. We achieve worse without safety nets. Awesome. Jenny? We achieve better with safety nets. Okay, awesome. Uh, Shreya? I'd say both. Uh, it depends on the kind of person you are whether you're able to take the advantage of that safety net or whether you're to like take advantage of it one one day i'm going to get you to keep, like get off that fence you know like you can't keep sitting on the fence i know it's it's life of, like, the life of an overthinker uh snare i think it depends on the person's situation Gosh, I thought you two, like, I know you're twins, but you're meant to have, like, different personalities, right? Um, we do. I don't know what in this from. case, in, in this case, I actually think it depends. And for Gia, what's your final thoughts? What do you think? I'm going to annoy you and say it depends on the safety net. <laughs> the the right. fact is a safe place. Well, there you have it, folks. Um, we've got two more, yes, we need safety nets, two that are sitting on the fence. What do you think? Drop some comments down, let us know. And don't forget to like, subscribe, share with all your mates and maybe even come and take part in the next podcast. Uh, hopefully see you here again next week. Uh, until then, we shall see you later. Peace. <laughs>